SDGR Schrodinger. I'm going to do a back test, analysis, technical uh, review, look at what this company is all about, where it's going, its stock price, its uh, intrinsic value, its revenue, its debt position, insider trading, who's buying it, who's selling it, what is it, should you buy it? Oh my God, can he answer all these questions in one video? Yes, he can. If I can talk for three hours, I can. Don't you worry about it. You sit back and relax wherever you are right now, in, uh, in uh, um, <laughs> a big review has been done recently. About, apparently, most people sit and watch a show on the toilet. There you go. Apparently, it's been alleged. Anyway, enough of the alleging, and let's get on with the Schrodinger SDGR stock review. What is it? Now, why am I doing this? If you are a member of my channel, you can request me to make a video, whether I buy the stock or not, whether I care less or not. I don't even know what this stock is. I'm looking at it for the very first time live in the show and you are getting this information and members will get this information with exclusive content that other, other general public viewers don't get. Shall we get into it? Yes, we shall. What is Schrodinger? Schrodinger. Sounds good, right? This is it right now. I have no shares in it. I don't even know what it is. Let's discover together. Schrodinger. Right. Schrodinger engages in the provision of chemical simulation software. Chemical, so, chemical software simulation. Now, that sounds interesting for a start. I didn't know you could have chemical software. Anyway, to the pharmaceutical industry. Now, as an investor in J&J, &J, I like that industry. It operates through the software and drug discovery business segments. It's got my interest because you cannot get better and more profitable for the right software companies and the right pharmaceutical companies. Put them together, and boy, you could be in for some serious, uh, some serious stocks here. Anyway, let's have a look. Let's scroll down and see. Now then, that's basically, that's the outline of what this company is. Let's see a little bit more. I'll zoom in and make it a bit easier for you. There you go. The software segment sells software to transform drug discovery across the life sciences industry and to companies in material science industries. The drug discovery segment offers diverse portfolio or uh, preclinical and uh, clinical programs uh, internally and through uh, collaborations. They have advanced or various stages of their to various stages of discovery and development. The the company was founded by Richard Freisner, uh, William A. Goddard, uh, and uh, and uh, and is based in uh, oh, it was in 1990, headquartered in New York. Uh, okay. There's some basic information. The CEO, Rami Farad, uh, employee 787, quite small company, headquartered in New, New York. Uh, okay. One of the first thing I'd like to do now, if I'm going to buy this, is to review the CEO and those who founded the company, look at their history, their experience, how effective and successful they've been in the past. And that gives me an indication how likely they are to be successful in the future. Uh, I want to, I'll do a full, um, uh, a full uh, balance sheet check as well. I'd like to look at that. We're not going to do all of that in this video. It's only a 10 minute video. I'd like to look at their debt, how much debt they have and so on and so forth. The market cap, 1.56 billion. Okie dokie. There we go. We can see the uh, the market cap there. Price to earnings, 24 times earnings, which means it's not a negative. It is making money, which is interesting when I come on to the date of inception in a moment. Pays no dividend. Average volume, 668. The volume today is 746. So the volume is up today. Always good to see. We're like a stock with volume. Otherwise, you can't get in and out. You can't trade the stock very well. Well, it doesn't move very much. It has no movement and no life. You want uh, some life to the stock. The low today was 2140. The 52 week low was 1585. The high was 59. And uh, the, the high today was 21. So it's had a reasonable swing of movement. The analysts, of course, Morningstar, uh, again, analysts are very influenced, a bit like Jim Cramer. We talked about him earlier. Um, don't always go on this just because it's a buy on here doesn't mean you should buy it. But it's always nice to see no sellers and a good high buy like that. Um, now then, uh, before we move on any further, we need to note that this company's only been around since 2020. It's got very little uh, history. Uh, so my back test is not going to be that effective over time. However, 2020 was when it came out. And unlike, unlike a lot of IPOs that just to crash and burn. This one didn't. 
However, they've been crashing and burning for the last two years. Three years ago, IPOs did okay. So don't get too excited when you see this going, well, hang on a minute. Most IPOs crash and burn. They do this year. They did last year. 2020, not so much. Why? Because it was just after COVID. March 2020, everyone was at home buying everything. Everything went up and then it all sold off. So don't be too excited about that bounce because that's what everybody had. Not everybody, but most companies had that in 2020. All right. Particularly companies that were benefiting from being at home, for example, uh, things like uh, Kavana or or um, Peloton or Zoom, whatever. I wouldn't have thought this company would, but maybe it had a lot to do with uh, COVID. I don't know. I'm just looking at it for the first time. So this was a unicorn event, potentially. Since then, we've been given up and it's been going down and down and down. Had a bit of a rally uh, at the end of this year. Most stocks did. So that's nothing exciting. Most stocks did this. Uh, you know, the uh, in, in, uh, this part of the year, or my my whole my whole port my whole portfolio did this, and now we're back down here again. So nothing too exciting from the chart point of view. This was a, a unicorn event, and this is what everybody did, and now we're back down. So nothing exciting here, but of course that could present opportunity to buy a, a good company at a low price. Let's uh, have a little look. This is important. Before we go on to the um, the technicals and the back test, this is important. I like this. This is very important, often gets overlooked when I ask people about this. Uh, you should always look who owns the stock. Why is that important? Because it gives you a kind of sentiment of the stock. If you've got a company that uh, it's owned by Mullen Investors and Binky Bonk Coin and Pepe Coin and, and God knows what else, it's very likely to be uh, invested by gamblers and scammers and and bots and, and, and stuff like that. And it's going to be very volatile. You want to see uh, a company like this, you want to see it uh, have all the pharmaceutical companies, uh, good quality companies. I'd like to see J&J &J in this list. Uh, uh, let's have a look. Teladoc, CRISPR, Unity, Block, C3 AI, a uh, bit of a warning there, and CrowdStrike. Okay. Not great. Not great. I would want to see, I'd want to see J&J &J investors in there pharmaceuticals, because if they're investing in it, maybe there's a partnership building. I don't know. You can see how you can put these pieces together and start to see, okay, if people from J&J, &J, I'm just using them as an example, are investing in a company like this, or maybe even um, Palantir um, being a software data company, uh, perhaps there's a, there's a connection there. Perhaps they're investing in each other. Amazon, Amazon would have been good because they have medical interests. If they were investing, uh, if, if you've got shareholders, uh, investing in, in Amazon as well. But this is what generally is in this stock. C3 AI, AI is good, but uh, that was overbought and that went down the toilet. Uh, and so everyone got too excited about that one. The others I don't know a huge amount about. Uh, I know Teladoc is uh, something that Kathy Wood likes, but Kathy Wood likes Kathy Wood. Not necessarily the right... Uh, what's right for her shareholders, uh, her investors, but what's right for her. So I'm not thrilled to see that, but it's okay. Um, anyway, there's what we have available on Robinhood. Now let's go over to do a back test. Now this back test, to be fair, isn't going to be that use, much use, because I always like to compare it to the S&P, but we want to look at 10 years, 20 years, really. Unfortunately, we can't, it's a new company. We saw it pop there, um, um, uh, Schroed Schrodinger is in red and the S&P 500, the benchmark is in blue. As you can see, uh, it popped up. Uh, it liked COVID. It liked the unicorn event. And that is a warning sign to me because something unusual, which may never happen again, was what popped the stock. However, if we get another pandemic or something like that, maybe this company could be, you know, react in that time. No real reason to think COVID is going to surge. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. I don't know. But uh, even if that was the, the reason why it popped, but it certainly popped after COVID, uh, then fell away. And you can see it's been falling away. Um, and uh, you can see similar movements to the SNP. Uh, when the SNP moved here, so did uh, so did uh, Schrodinger. You can see it when it came down, so did Schrodinger. They kind of follow each other. Uh, it rose together, it fell away. It does seem to be slightly more volatile though. 
which is you'd expect. Um, and if we put ten thousand dollars in to the S and P by now, we'd have eleven nine. Uh, with Schrodinger, would have, would have lost seventy percent of our money. We wouldn't be that happy, would we? Uh, we wouldn't uh, we wouldn't be very happy if we put in ten grand and now we've only got three. However, there there it is. That's what we have. Now then, uh, this is what I want to look at now. I want to go over to this here and look at some financial information with Schrodinger. Revenue, uh, it um, is down 2% uh, overall at the moment, but we are moving up over the one year. We're up. Let me just zoom in and make it a bit uh, clearer for you if I can. Uh, let me see what I've got. Uh, not up 19%. Three years up at 104 percent. You can see there operating income down 12 percent. Operating income is down 166 million. Net income. Hey, hi Martin. I'm back from my long hiatus. Busy stacking cash and building empires. Always looks like you are doing quite well. I'm proud, and my best wishes are with you. Peace. Hey, that's very very nice indeed. That's Peru. Peru Invest. This is made during a live video. That's very, very kind of you. Yes, we are continually growing, hoping to be the best, most honest, most real life channel in the world. That's a very nice surprise from Peru. Didn't expect that. Very, very, uh, very, very nice. Um, only mentioned Peru this morning. Uh, there we go. 66.4 million net income. Operating cash flow uh, down 104.8. Capital expenditure down at 10.4 billion, down 5%. This isn't all looking good. Uh, assets 842 million. Liabilities at 230 million. That's uh, that's not so bad at all. Uh, current um, liabilities 107 million, and uh, current assets. 50, 592 million. Now, if you're not an accountant or a CPA, you're looking for more assets and liabilities to have a good balance sheet. So that's looking, that's looking okay. Let's scroll down a minute. Uh, the efficiency of the company. This is very, very important, particularly in today's uh, market. We are looking for an efficient company. Uh, gross margin, 56%. Not bad margins, right? Operating income down 81%, net margin down 82%. Uh, okay, let's moving on down, moving on down. Let me uh, see. Uh, now then, what does Wall Street give it as a target? Wall Street are giving it... Now, remember, Wall Street don't like things that they can't quantify. They're rubbish at doing uh, Tesla. They're rubbish at doing other stocks like Virgin Galactic or or, uh, or Palantir or anything like that. They can't see past their noses. They're not really investors. They're more scout traders and, and all the rest of it. In today, gone tomorrow. So we can't take what Wall Street have to say too much. Anyway, the lowest forecast is $31, 45% upside. So uh, this looks interesting. Uh, the the Wall Street target um, uh, um, average is up at 167%. And the high forecast is 290%. So the analysts like it. Now, our last thing we want to move on to is we want to look at uh, ownership. We want to see, uh, like I said before with J&J &J today, and I showed you what was going on with J&J, &J, we're not looking to see when uh, insiders start buying it. We're looking to see when insiders are selling it and then the selling is slowing to have a stop. Because if we start seeing insiders buying it, then of course, if they're buying it, it's already going up. We've missed the boat. As an investor, we do this research. We want to find out what's happening before the investors are, and the insiders are jumping in. What we have seen is uh, 1.2 million over the last nine to 12 months, 681 sold over the last six to nine months, uh, 2.4 million in the last three to six months, and then uh, in the last three months, 401,000. Um, we also need to find out and do research who is buying and who is selling. Right now, it's who is selling because 
it can give a false impression. It could be uh, that these particular people have, have, have sold 1% of their allocation purely for tax purposes. A lot of that is automated. A lot of them don't even realize what they're selling. It's just being sold automatically as part of tax harvesting. Or, or revenue or, or or pension building for whatever reason doesn't necessarily mean the company have done and dusted and they're leaving the company and so on but what we're looking to see is it slowing down now as we can see the last transaction which was Lawton Kenneth Patrick who sold 401,000 that was back on August the 9th August the 9th was the last selling. Now, it's October the 31st, so we've had no real action for the last couple of months. Now, that is interesting. What we're seeing, we are seeing the, uh, the selling from insiders slow down. Yes, we had a little peak here, of course, but we're seeing it slow down to a trickle and nothing for the last two months which then has impacted, of course, the stock price. It's down by the amount that's been sold and the amount that's traded. We can see that from the volume. We get an indication that insiders are selling it. It's going down, which would make sense. It would have been sold around about, uh, let me just check around about here, July. Yeah, yeah, around about here. It was sold and it went down. We've had no selling down here. Now, we don't necessarily want to wait for buying because now it's already up. So would now be a good time to buy it? I kind of like this stock. I like J&J. &J. You know why I like J&J. &J. Uh, and it's continued to go up. I've said it was oversold. Jim Cramer is completely wrong. He just makes TV. Doesn't give, doesn't give any useful information other than it's entertaining and, and says boya a lot and does lots of sound effects. He was completely wrong uh, about J&J. &J. Uh, so I like the pharmaceutical uh, industry. I like data. I like Palantir. So I like this. Uh, I like this industry. It's interesting to me. Um, so this could be worth a buy. Uh, I'm going to keep my eye on this and uh, looking at that uh, information over there with the um, with the uh, the selling slowing down and it's been a couple of months. This could be interesting. Anyway, there is my review. I hope you liked that review and I hope you found that useful of Schrodinger. If you'd like to know more, I go live up to 10 hours a day. I aim to be the most honest, real YouTube channel in the world. We are growing every day. 95% of our live viewers are members. It's the highest engagement rate of any channel on YouTube. Uh, join us as members. I work for you. I uh, provide the most honest, real content. I am investing in every bit of information I can get my hands on, inside information, who's trading, uh, what's going on, making friends on my uh, X account, my Instagram account, talking to people. We've got astronauts that I'm talking with, with Virgin Galactic. Uh, CEOs of companies speak to me. Some of the largest investors in the world on stocks like Virgin Galactic speak to me. We've had them as guests on my show and uh, it's all good. If you'd like to click above my head, you'll find all the links and below in the description, the links to my membership program, which is only a couple of bucks. It supports the live shows. Uh, I am members only virtually all the time now because it's all about providing the best quality service. Not the biggest YouTube channel will, be the, will become the biggest by being the best most honest channel in the world and serving my members. We have a higher engagement and percentage rate of members than there are on, on Bloomberg or there are on Yahoo. 95% of my live viewers are members. Also, if you want a full review as well, I can do that as, your, as a member. Click over here for the FOMC report tomorrow and other videos I think you will find useful in this stock. Thank you very much indeed. And as always, take care of your money, yourselves, your crypto and each other.